Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here, the lab coat's on back order, and we're here with episode 19 of our Pokemon X playthrough here on the channel. In the last episode, we made our way to Ambret Town, which I believe is on the southwestern coast of Kalos, where they talk about fossils and all that kind of cool stuff from the past. We also made our way down, is this called Jagged Pass? I think? Somehow that's uh, sticking out in my mind. We're riding on a Rhyhorn, which is pretty cool. And we have to go check out a place called Glittering Cave, where one of the, I think it's the main fossil restoration guy that works at the laboratory, is waiting to uh, get picked up. There is an item there I want to grab. I'll probably grab it on the way back, because we are going to have to travel through here again at some point. But for right now, do I get to do a team recap? Because if I uh, disembark the Rhyhorn, am I in this trainer's path? No, I'm not. I'm all well and good. All right, so let's do our team recap right now. We got leading the way. Well, we're going to do a little switcheroo here. We got leading the way is actually our Piplup slipping from the Sinnoh region. He is a level 20 Piplup with uh, Torrent ability. The nature is brave. He's holding the sharp beak to power up Peck. We also got Bubble Beam, Ice Beam, and Cut for the moveset. Next is our Amulet Coin holding uh, Frogadier Springer at level 20, our starter here in Kalos, of course. The ability is Torrent also, and the, lo uh, the, the Lonely is Nature, interpret that how you will, with uh, Water Pulse, Quick Attack, Leer, and Smoke Screen for the moves. Next is our Santaloon Forest Pikachu, Blitz at level 20, holding Berry Juice for a little bit of HP restoration. Uh, mild Nature with the Static ability. We've got Electro Ball, Quick Attack, Thunder Wave, and Play Nice. And last but not least is Axel, our Snorlax Destroyer, the little Badoo here at level 21. He's holding the Miracle Seed to power up Mega Drain. Also have Venoshock, Stun Spore, Worry Seed. The ability is Poison Point, and Calm is of the Nature. All right, so, so, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting all choked up. We want to do some training, so let's take on... Did I fight you already? Hail, trainer. Oh, allow me to restore your Pokemon to full health. Okay, I'll take that. I was thinking I was low on some of the PP for some of the moves. Hail, trainer. You must have some impressive Pokemon to have made it this far. Well, I have made it through five previous regions in the Pokemon world, so you're kind of right. Can I get off here? I just don't want Rhyhorn to be blocking the stairs. I think we are good. I believe that's going to be a trainer, but right here is Glittering Cave. Before we dive in there, I guess you're not a trainer? Trainer tips. You can, you, you can immediately warp outside a cave you're in by using an escape rope. What do you say, sir? It's real easy to get lost inside this here cave. Just take it one step at a time. Go rushing in all careless like and you'll never find your way out. I've heard that a good trick for getting through mazes, not that this is really too maze-like, is always take the right path, because eventually it might take forever to get through the entire maze, but by taking every right turn you come to, you should be able to uh, make your way through a maze. The only thing I can see that being a problem with, though, is if you take a right turn down a path that then circles in a right turn pattern, because then you would be stuck in that loop. You would have to eventually say, like, well, I've been here, i got to now take a left. Then you could get lost. But I did say last episode, this place here has a pretty cool perspective. Like, look how cool this looks. It's, you don't, you, you know, up until now, you haven't seen this kind of thing in Pokemon. Like, a, it's almost like a first-person kind of view. So I'm going to check out everything. Every shadow you come to, actually, is a Pokemon encounter also. It's neat the way they kind of mix things up a little bit here. We see a little Cubone. Now, I was going to say, something I didn't mention last time, but it was kind of coming to mind, as we kept seeing Hippopotops and Sandile on the rocks as we were walking, one of the things that I really liked about this generation when I first got into it, just uh, finding, not necessarily new species of Pokemon, but, you know, finding some old favorites that I remember from previous generations, because this was our first time seeing the modern-day 3D models for all of these species, and it was just cool to see... Like, how they would move, stuff like that. Like, I, I'm sorry, I wondered at one point, I'm getting all jumbled up on my words once again. I wondered at one point, ooh, there's a shadow. If some of the models in Pokemon X and Y were actually the models from, say, like, Pokemon Stadium or Pokemon Coliseum just updated, I don't think they are. I mean, it's easy to say, generally, the Pokemon are similar to what they've always been, so they haven't had really too many big design changes. That's not a lot of uh, damage, and this thing is now going for the focused energies. Can we finish with a bubble beam? I mean, we are at full health, too, so we can maybe handle a critical hit? I don't know. 
least we took it out before we need to find out, so I appreciate that. But I do think these are more, you know, newer made models. Don't need to switch anyone? No, we're good. Where am I going to find some items, though? There's got to be something cool in here. But anyway, yeah, like uh, something as simple as a sand dial, which I've already had a sand dial on my main team, uh, Erwin from Gen 5. But seeing them for the first time in 3D was... Uh, like, every new encounter was something amazing. And that's what I... You can't really recreate that feeling, I guess, but that's what I liked about it. Okay, so we're here in this cave area. And who's this flashy-looking red-clad character? And also saying, what's that to me? This is going to be, as I always happen to find in every region that I tend to move to, the evil team of the region. Well, well, what do we have here? A nosy little trainer has come poking around. Listen up, we're the fashionable team whose very name makes people tremble in fear. Team Fleer. Flair, sorry. Team Flair's goal is to make it so we're the only ones who are happy. That's messed up. You should share the happies. We don't care one bit about what happens to other trainers or Pokemon. Get out of here, kid. Don't you know not to play with fire? Alright, I'll leave. Actually, I won't. Get out of here, kid. I'm gonna say no to that. I've fought teams before. I can fight them again. Getting my fancy suit dirty isn't the stylish way to do things, but if you insist, I'll obliterate you. Get him Hound Hour. So you got fire types, do ya? What was uh, Team Magma? They were more ground type, I think? It's hard to say, because Archie... No, sorry, uh, Maxi had Camerupt as his ace, so that's fire and ground. But I'm wondering if this is the first time we've had like a fire type evil team. This Team Rocket, they were more into the poison. Also into dark when Gen 2 came around. Look at that one hit KO. Take that, Team Flare. Uh... Yeah, so Team Rock was more Poison Gen 1, Dark in Gen 2. No new attack, that's fine. Oh wait, you got more Pokemon? If only we had something super effective against a flying type like a Zubat. Indeed we do, but we might get flinched out. But Team Aqua, of course, was Water type. Team Magma was, again, let me know, Fire or Ground? Either or. And what would you say Team Galactics was? Honestly, of all the evil teams, Team Galactic is the one that slips my mind the most. You may have beaten me, but when I lose, I go out in style. Well, at least you go out. That's the important thing. Which I can't do as much right now because my region, as far as the uh, pandemic is concerned, is getting a little bit worse. So any of my going outings has had to be scaled back at least a little bit. Again, I don't really go too far other than just like my one block radius neighborhood anyway, but still. What's this? You're a pretty tough Pokemon trainer for a kid. Watch yourself. I'm not the only member of Team Flair. What if it was? What if Team Flair... What if What if the next evil team was one person? But is, are you indicating you're the not the only one in here of Team Flair? Maybe. That could be what you're getting at. All right, slip in. Let's let... Let Blitz take the lead for now. In a cave? A Pikachu? Is that the right way to play? I don't know. But we'll go with... Hey! A scientist. That's probably the guy who we need to talk to about getting the stuff. Where am I going? I thought there was two paths. But, yeah, like, walking through that area earlier with, like, that almost first person, like, just over-the-shoulder perspective, that was cool. And I think... Are there more places like that in Kalos? There might not be, actually. We're gonna take everyone else down so we can do what we want. That sounds like a Team Skull kind of thing, actually, too. I like the uh, female hair, though. Like, the buns, I guess, are done up like little tendrils of flame. I guess, is that the proper terminology? I don't know. We're gonna Electro Ball this thing, though. The levels are decent. We're not, we, technically we are over level, but not by as much as I would have liked. Oh, and we're dodging the old poison gas. Good job, Blitz. Wonder if we'll find a Thunderstone in here. Well, this is a cave. Do we get Rock Smash soon? Because I do believe you can get certain items from using Rock Smash. I don't know if they'd be as rare as a, uh, oh, Electric. I should get a ground type eventually. Let's go for quick attack. Uh, I don't know if you get anything as rare as an evolution stone out of using Rock Smash, but it's possible. That was a critical? What hardly did? I mean, it did fine. A non-critical would hardly do anything. Okay, so Howl has its attack stat up. We'll keep going. I could switch into Axel. I mean, not like we resist electric. We can resist electric as it is anyway, though. But I think there's not too much to worry about. We probably got this. Yeah, we got this. 
Good old Blitz. Not getting the last hit is a critical, which has been sort of his, uh, his motif throughout the entire game, but still getting the KO. Hey, you weren't supposed to beat me! Sadly, that's just how things went. And I gotta style myself up, too. I haven't visited many apparel shops in this yet. You should keep your nose out of adults' business, kid. Is there anything down here? No. Nope. Probably down here, if I can rock smash my way through. I think the scientist might give me rock smash, though. Oh, wait. Is this? I don't think it is. No. Sometimes you can find shadows on the ground here, and that's a Pokemon encounter that swoops down from above. Pretty cool. We're Team Flare! We put the fashion into fear! What? We were looking for fossils, but we discovered a kid! Chaz, how do they know my name? Are they psychics? Or is that my friend? There are two members of Team Flare! Well then, are you ready to team up and battle them? No. Yeah, of course, let's do this. I just fought with another one of these Team Flare guys. If you just want to make people in Team Flare happy, why don't you just do that? But if you're going to go around threatening other people, we won't let you get away with it. And once again, the saviors of the entire region in this particular uh, Pokemon adventure is a pair of... Actually, not even a pair. Well, we're a pair of kids. But back in Gen 1, it was a single 10-year-old boy that obliterated Team Rocket. Although, I guess technically not, because uh, we find out uh, Team Rocket still exists in Johto, and... Uh, just Giovanni basically abandoned him. So I'm going to try to take the Scraggy. I'm hoping... Oh, okay. Esper goes for the defenses. Esper, if it has a confusion or something, should be able to obliterate the... I keep using obliterate. The Crow Gunk. I don't like that damage. But the Berry Juice comes through. Alright. I'm probably going to be switching, though. Let me see. A Brick Break into Pikachu. Hang in there, buddy. And it did break the light screen. But at least we got the static on the Scraggy. I am definitely switching. So, was that two fighting moves that they went for? Because you know who I'm thinking. I'm thinking Axel. Let's get our buddy in here to resist the fighting attacks. Uh, we can't get Poison Point on either of them because Scraggy's poisoned and Krogunk currently, or Kr Krogunk is poison type. So, we don't have, what is it? Uh, What's the ability that allows Salandit and Salazzle to poison? Corrosion, I think? Oh, Esper, hang in there! Go on. Use a psychic attack on that Krogunk, please! Uh, I'm gonna go with... Is Mega Drain more powerful with the Miracle Seed? I don't think it is, but it does at least heal my HP, so let's go for... Uh, Mega Drain on Scraggy. Axel's the fastest on the field, too, by the way. That is decent. That didn't really do a lot of damage, though. Yes, come on, come on. Take that thing out. We've only got one Pokemon each. Yes, all right. There's at least one down on the opposing side. Good job, Esper. Just hang in there. Oh, Blitz leveled up. Nice. Double team. Let me take a look at what we have right now. Double team could be useful. It doesn't really affect our overall team, though. And I don't think... It's that good in the sense that even if we dodge some attacks, if they if the opponent lands one really strong physical hit, that still might be enough to take down Blitz. So I'm thinking play nice is better to keep in our other attacks as well. So for now, we're not going to get double team. I think that's a TM anyway, though, so we could uh, teach that later. Give up on learning double team? I do believe we shall. All right, can we take Scraggy down? Faint attack? No, Asper has fallen. Permanently removed from the playthrough. Serena, I'm so sorry. She'll probably catch another one, though. Oh, no. Moxie. Um, okay, that could be a problem. Should I? It's probably too late to really worry about Worry Seed right now. Let's just go for Venoshock, which I'm hoping is more powerful. Absol going for Quick Attack as well, though. Come on, Venoshock, pull through. This thing has an attack boost. Take it out. I think we got it. Yes. Okay. That scared me when Blitz's HP was just dropping. Just skyrocketing downward. Freaky stuff. Oh, go, go, Team Flare. Oh, I lost. I guess I'll stop cheering now. You've made me so sad, I think I'm going to cry. We're not certain about that. You should probably be more definitive with uh, your emotions. Be more in touch with yourself and understand what makes you you. Then you'll know if you're going to cry. Oh man, my favorite fashionable team, team Flare suit is all filthy. 
If we can restore fossils, we can make some good money. That was also... Like, this is so reminiscent of Cal... Or, God, that I can't tell. That was exactly Team Rocket's idea in Mount Moon, remember? All right, let's grab a superior potion for our Pikachu. And then swap him out of that active spot, because now Springer needs the next level up. Again, this goes back to, like I was saying before, I like to keep my team nice and even. Even though it wouldn't be too bad to have an occasional over-leveled Pokemon, because right now we're kind of on par with the opponents, and that can be scary. I'm a trainer. Protecting my partners is what I do. Except for Esper. Come on, let's go look for that researcher from the fossil lab. I can't talk diagonally to one of you. There we go. Oh, yeah, whatever. Team Flare suit's filthy. Who cares? I know I don't. Although, if I had a fancy suit like that, I probably would care at least a little bit more. Hey, free item. We could just walk out. Well, not walk out. We could just kind of teleport out. But we just picked up a free escape rope. Man, they make this game easy, don't they? Anyway, here's the scientist. And why were you just standing there by Team Flare if you're going to run up anyway? Did you find him? I think I did. Why, hello. Here to look for, here to look for fossils as well? Are you okay? Did Team Flare come here? Team Flare? What's that, a Pokemon? Don't worry about it. It looks like he was completely absorbed in looking for fossils. You two are very lucky. I just now found two fossils. But they're both ones I already have, so I'll give one to each of you. Do you want the Jaw Fossil or the Sail Fossil? Now, if you don't know what these turn into, Jaw Fossil is Tyrant and Sail Fossil is... uh, What's it called again? Amora, I believe? Jaw Fossil for uh, Tyrant is a... Rock and Dragon type Tyrannosaurus, well, baby T-Rex, and uh, Amora is a Rock and Ice type, what is it called, Brachiosaurus, Apatosaurus, I don't know, the big long-necked one. Of those two, I kind of like the idea of getting something with a double weakness to steel, a double weakness to fighting, weakness to water, grass, uh, probably some other stuff, so I'm more into the Dragon type. Even though we're not going to restore these fossils, I'm going to pick the jaw fossil. It's the jaw fossil. It looks like it could chew up anything. Is this the fossil you want? Yes, indeed. I do think Tyrant and its evolution Tyrantrum are definitely cool additions to the Pokemon, like the Pokedex. It's like people have said, they've wanted a T-Rex Pokemon for like ever since Gen 1, basically. I'll restore your fossils and turn them, in, turn them back into Pokemon at the fossil lab. Hope to see you there. So we have the escape rope to leave, but I'm going to walk out because I do believe there might be more items to pick up on the way through. But we still got to chat. Well, we went looking for the assistant and we found that suspicious group called Team Flare as well. I guess I should train more so I can travel safely with those Team Flare people running around. In that case, I guess the best thing to do would be to challenge the Silage City Gym. And that is, of course, the next place we're going to go to. So we don't have Rock Smash yet which means we're going to want to come back here eventually to see what we can find as far as hidden items go. But look, Team Flare has uh, become Team Scarce, I guess. I was trying to think of a cool rhyme. I thought of a rhyme. Not sure how cool that was. It is cold outside today. I haven't been out yet, but just walking through the back porch. I'm thinking when I do go out to do my daily socially distanced Pokemon going, which I always do anyway, I'm definitely going to want to bundle up. This is, I'm recording this on the day of the legendary raid hour for, are you a decent level? Yeah, you're a decent level. For Groudon and Kyogre in Pokemon Go, of course, and the, uh, there's a special, or a timed research where you need to catch two of each of those legendaries in order to complete this research, and we're going to be able to get a Rayquaza with an exclusive attack if we can get that accomplished. And I'm going to be holding one of my live streams for that as well. Hopefully, we'll be able to take on two Groudon, two Kyogre, and add them to our collection and complete that research. But I always want to make sure to go out and get plenty of uh, revives and potions and also gifts for people as well. To try to keep them friendship levels going up. Even though we're now past the Legacy 40 feature of Pokemon Go, people might still want to get to level 40. I mean, you know, who wouldn't want to keep leveling up, right? So I want to keep giving gifts out so we can boost up them friend levels. But for right now, I'm going to keep getting through Glittering Cave. And I forget exactly. Like, there's something I remember happening on the way there. It's kind of cool. Oh, wait, TM. Shadow Claw. That's a decent move. I think it has a high critical hit ratio. Let me see if anyone can even learn that. Uh, bad. 
Shadow Claw, what can you do for us? Where are you even at? Right here. No one can learn it. Okay, but it is power 70 and does have a high critical hit ratio. Ghost type attack as well. Not a lot of super effectivity. I believe Ghost is only good on Ghost and Psychic. So you only got two options for that. But still, a high critical hit ratio can be pretty decent. And it's neat. Like, did you know, back in Gen 1... Actually, no, let's, let's, let's say it this way. Hey, Lunatar. Let's say in current generations, if you use, say, Sword Stance to sharply boost your attack stat, and then you land a critical hit, your current boosted attack stat is what gets doubled. Well, in this, 50% extra, but you uh, it takes your boosted stat to calculate the critical hit. But did you know in Gen 1, it didn't do that? If you had, say, three Sword Stances up, your attack was maxed out, and you attacked, but you landed a critical, it would only give you a critical hit based off of your base attack stat being doubled. And that was kind of broken, especially if you had like a move set of Slash or Karate Chop or uh, Razor Leaf was a high critical hit one as well. Still is. But back then, if you had stats boosted, the game didn't interpret that for calculating the damage if you get a critical. So that's kind of broken. They've, people have said Gen 1 has had some of the, like, the glitchiest programming well, ever since Gen 1, and that's true. Something that I heard is confirmed, but I haven't really, you know, looked into the confirmation. Just something I noticed as I was playing through myself back in the day. I would sometimes, like, t get hit by Sand Attack or uh, Tail Whip, let's say. Tail Whip lowers your defense. But I noticed after that would happen, any attack that I used that was uh, physical, it did a little bit more damage, it seemed. And I'm like, am I just, like miscalculating or misreading the HP bar, but from right here, for whatever reason, anything that lowers any of your other stats in the game increases your attack. And like, how does that even get programmed like that? That's That sounds like something that had to be intentionally programmed, and not just like an oversight. So, I mean, as far as I know, maybe it doesn't, and maybe it was just random that uh, you know how there's always a a variable in damage that is dealt from a Pokemon attack. Maybe that's what it was, and I just happen to always be getting a low roll the first hit, a high roll in the second, but I don't know. It seemed to be happening so frequently that I wasn't questioning the fact that maybe it is boosting my attack stat when I lose defense or something. Ah, the old days of Gen 1, when things were so much simpler, yet so much more complicated, I guess. All right, now, do we have time? I think since the last couple episodes, we went kind of long. Where's, okay, I was gonna say, where's my Rhyhorn? I'm gonna save it up right here. We'll make our way back to Ambrett Town in the next episode. Save it up nice, there we go. Make sure I save so we don't lose any uh, any data. But yeah, we'll make it back to Ambrett Town next episode and start making our way to Silage City, the site of our second gym in the Kalos region. For today, though, that is a wrap for Pokemon X Adventure number 19, or episode number 19. If you enjoyed today's episode, everybody, feel free to click like down below to let me know. And if you enjoyed it and you're not yet subscribed to our channel, feel free to subscribe to get some more Pokemon content from Professor Chaz. And if you want to leave a comment letting me know how things, you know, what you liked in this episode or what you want to see in the future, what you expect for what might happen. Like, when do you, you know, as much as I don't want it to happen, when do you think our next injury or in nuzlocke terms death is going to occur hopefully not for quite a while but i imagine as time goes on things will start getting a little bit crazier all right but if you also want to share this video or the full playlist with a friend of yours that might want to check out some older pokemon content please feel free to do that the more people that watch the better it helps the channel grow you can also help the channel grow if you'd like by clicking the join button below and seeing what perks are available for the two tiers we have set up to support myself and my adventures here on youtube but that is that for today, so Professor Chaz is now signing off. Thank you folks once again for watching, and I'll catch you next time.